I am very confident that if you clicked on this video, you want to learn more about make.coms arrays and bundle functions. So we're going to take a deep dive into how these work inside of make. And I will try to do this in under 10 minutes if I can. Let's get to it. So I set up this test sheet. You can see here, we're going to go through this and we're not going to do anything um, fancy. We're just going to go in and look at arrays and bundles inside of make.com. So I pulled up this uh, first one, which is um, this node called parse JSON. We can add or write JSON text and it will output it in the, in the correct way. Inside of make, we use these square brackets to start uh, any kind of um, bundle or array format. And the format also always goes like this, that the bundle is packed in curly brackets. Then we add a description of the item, then with a colon, and then we add the value. This is a string, a string is a text. Then we add a comma, and then we can add a new bundle value. If we right click on this and run this once, we will then see that we get one bundle, we can then see item one, two, three, four, five, six, so forth, laptop, mouse, etc. So this is one bundle. And the important thing to know about um, bundles inside of make is that in a scenario, whenever you have a bundle, it will run this bundle once. Like it will run the following scenario here, um, this way here, one time. Now let's say we have multiple bundles and we get multiple bundles when, for example, we uh, do Google Sheet uh, extracts. So I'll just um, pull up this example here so we can look at how bundles, multiple bundles look um, in code format. I know this is a no code platform, but it's really important to understand this in order to understand arrays and bundles. So now we still have the square brackets, top and bottom, that's just the wrapper. Then we have these curly brackets here. So remember, this is one bundle. Inside here, we have the values, ID, name, brand, specs, then so forth, the values for those. Uh, and multiple bundles are just these curly brackets uh, followed by a comma, then a new set of curly brackets followed by a comma. And these don't need, like they, do not need to look like each other. So instead of ID and ID, there could be all sorts of different things. It uh, doesn't need to be a repeatable pattern. It's nice when it is because it makes it um, look good. But let's run this module once and see what we get. You can now see that we get bundle one to five. And inside each bundle, we now have these uh, parameters that we can extract and use. Now let's run this search, uh, search row Google Sheet node. And let's see if I can collapse this a bit. This returns the exact same thing as this multiple bundle piece, or not the uh, data inside it, but the format. We get bundles. What this means, we get bundle one, bundle two, and bundle three. They also follow the same format. We get a URL that's from my um, Google Sheet. We have a header called URL node and um, some other fields in here. But the important thing here to note is these are bundles. So we get three bundles from the um, Google Sheet extractor or search rows. And then we have, what is it, five bundles from this multiple bundle uh, parse JSON node here. So if I just unlink these two, link here, and then say run this whole script once. Let me try again. Why didn't that work? That's because we have a let's do this. That's fine. There we go. You can now see the search row ran once, but the this becomes a lot. Node ran three times. So quick guess, what do you think happens when I add this one in? Uh, the smart would say it will run a lot of times, and it does. Because now we get three from the search row. And we get five, a multiple by five, this one, because we have five bundles. So we get up to 15 bundles here. So this ran 15 times. Search row ran once, 
multiple bundles ran three times due to the free over here. And then uh, the last one ran 15 times. So you can uh, burn through a lot of operations if you're not ca careful with bundles. Now, I know this uh, is a video about arrays. So let's talk about arrays. Let's uh, move this down so we can look into him. Looksy, looksy. Again, the, form, the difference between bundles and arrays is that an array is just multiple bundles put into a single object. So in JSON, these curly uh, brackets here are actually referred to as object. Um, can be. Again, we start with square brackets, top to bottom, and we get we have the same example here about these with these five uh, objects or uh, bundles here inside. But we start by adding a curly bracket, then we give uh, the name of the array, something name of array, and then we start a new square bracket, then we add multiple bundles. Then we close off the array with a square bracket. We close off the array bundle with a curly bracket. And then again, these top and button square brackets. When I run this, instead of having these five, we now get one with multiple bundles inside the array. What this does is suddenly, when I run this section now, we only run once, but all the values is here. So all the information is inside these collections of this array here. Um, what this means is that with arrays, we can package a lot of information into a single array uh, and pass on information through our scripts. And then we can unpack arrays um, throughout the script by using different functions like iterators, um, split functions and get functions inside make to extract the array uh, information. I can see that uh, time is running. So this one here is an example of how it can look. So say do not look because I have an API key in here and we don't want to expose that. This is data for SEO uh, API call. You can see the output here. This is a single bundle and then we have a lot of stuff inside. And I don't know if, if you can see it, it's a bit hard in this gray but we now have a collection of arrays and bundles uh, inside this first bundle. We go down to task and expand that. That's an array, but it only has one. We expand that again. We go down to results. That's an array. It has one here. We go down to items, which is an array. And then we actually get all the information hidden down here. But this item array is what we're after when doing a uh, this data for SEO, and we're searching on Google for the keyword, what is an array? We're searching in the US in English. So here we can actually see that we are getting both organic, people also ask video related searches and knowledge graphs. Uh, so this is a mixed thingy we get back. The first result is an organic, which means it is a website. So geeks for geeks, what is array? Sounds about right. That should be on first spot in Google. We can see the number two is a people also ask section. Then number three is also an organic. What this does now we get that array back from this HTTP node. We can then go into an iterator, extract that array, and then feed that into a scrape function. This is a simple scrape function just to get. We then convert that HTML into text, and then we aggregate, which means we combine the text again. Uh, I'll make another video on iterators and aggregators. So let's just see what this in this one, we extract this URL by type, and we only want organic. So this is some fancy uh, parsing here. But if we run this one, I said that it should slice and only take the top three. So it will go and do a Google search, it will then pass on that array, it will slice it up. So we only get the three first, the top three, it will get the uh, all the HTML from each of those sites. Um, I don't know, there we go. It will then convert that into text. And we then aggregate, which means combine all the text into one, we get a giant text base from these top three URLs. 
So that's a lot of text. A simpler version of this would be to actually create an array. So here I have three URLs. This is my website, Scaled by Tech. We have a comma. We then have my free stuff, then a comma, and then the about page. We can convert this into an array by doing a split function. So this text we split by a comma. So you can use the split function. You can just type split and then start a bracket and then add your text. So text, and then semicolon and what you want to split it by. And we, I added commas as my splitting object. When I run this, run once, it will do what it was supposed to do. We get the text, which is three URLs divided by a comma. We then turn that into an array and iterators take arrays and run each uh, part of or each bundle of the array one time. So we get bundle one, so you can see a value, it's my website, and then bundle two, bundle three. You can actually think of um, these search of things inside make that uh, returns more than one thing. They're in intrinsic to be an iterator. So they output multiple stuff. So this one and this iterator is more or less the same thing. Um, so iterators take arrays and do stuff multiple times with items inside that array. Again, we then get this giant wall of text, but I haven't written that much. So it's a lot smaller here. Then for the last one, I mean, this is more of a example of what can be done. We're uh, five minutes over almost. So I'll be quick here. Let's say you have this array of keywords where the keyword is the name, laptop, mouse, keep like you can imagine that these could be keywords. We then feed this array into an iterator and we then start the iterator process. Um, from here, you can see that we take the array, we iterate over it, then we scrape like we do this scrape search. And then we do the iterator again and take the top three. We take all the text and put that into a URL. Then we combine all that text here. So search term, then top three, uh, search scrape data is this one here. So you can see we can do for uh, 10, 15, 100 keywords uh, and iterate over them, get all the uh, SERP data and combine this into documents. This would take up a lot of operations. Yes. And you could imagine what um, what we can do if we started adding AI nodes into this as well. So this was apparently the fastest I could run through bundles and arrays in make. Uh, you can download this script for free just uh, below this video. And if you want more free stuff, you can just go to scale by tech forward slash free desk stuff or in like Use the link in the comment. Um, hope this was informative. I know that this is a geeky topic and not many people uh, are interested in this, but if you are creating complex scripts, like I am a lot of the times, understanding bundles and uh, arrays is super helpful um, in manipulating data. So until the next video, I hope you have a lovely day and see you in the next one. Bye.